Welcome to another episode of Reading to the 246. My name is Karen Wall, but you can call me Auntie Karen. Reading to the 246 is a space where children of all ages, including us adults, can learn facts about Barbados, islands across the region and the world. A special shout out to our viewers on Facebook and YouTube. and want to say thank you for joining us, but also don't forget to like, tag, and share. It's beginning to feel and look a lot like Christmas. We're busy cleaning, decorating, and of course, baking. This evening, we at Reading to the 246 are on the receiving end of a special creative. Welcome, Cherise Harris. Hi, thank you for having me. Uh, thanks for joining us. Cherise Harris has spent much of her childhood in Barbados writing stories and making art. She completed her associate degree in visual arts at the Barbados Community College and was awarded a Barbados scholarship in 2006. She completed her Bachelor of Fine Arts in Illustration at the School of Visual Arts in NYC and later her MA in Illustration, or thorough practice at Fulmouth University in the UK. Since graduating, Cherise has worked as a freelance illustrator, and her experience includes children's books, illustrations, storyboarding for advertisements, puppet building, and even a brief stint as a puppeteer, as well as costume and set design for local theatre productions. In 2020, Cherise signed with her agency Painted Works and has since illustrated various works, including the picture book, Carla and the Christmas Cornbread by celebrity chef and TV host Carla Hall and illustrations for the chapter book series Dragons in a Bag by Zeta Elliott. When illustrated, Cherise works in a variety of media, including pencils, inks, watercolor, and digital. She is inspired by childhood memories and the books and movies she enjoyed growing up in the 90s, which often had to do with children going off on big adventures. For fun, Cherise loves watching movies, baking, and documenting motherhood in her comics. She currently lives in Barbados with her husband and two children. Welcome again, Cherise. Welcome again to this wonderful Barbadian creative. Thank you. The life of an illustrator and storyteller. Share for our readers how this journey has been for you. Well, this has been a, a really long journey. Um, illustration is something that I have wanted to do for a very long time. When I was a child, anybody asked me what career I wanted, it would always be to be an artist. And I have pursued art basically my entire life. Um, I would say within the past 10 years, I've really been working. This would have been after I graduated um, from the School of Visual Arts in New York City. And I have been working freelance uh, in children's book illustration with local authors and some overseas as well, doing mostly self-publishing. And then I would have been working, as you mentioned, in puppetry. And I even did my own um, brand at one point where I designed bags and head ties. Uh, and it's, it is within the last, I would say, that's two years, two, three years that I met my agent. And I was really able to focus on what my biggest dream was um, for the longest time, which would be to be a children's book illustrator, as well as illustrating um, other things like magazines and, you know, getting into books in general. Now, today you're sharing the story of Carla and the Christmas Cornbread by celebrity chef and TV host Carla Hall. How did this collaboration come about? Well, this was very exciting. This was the very first job that I did after signing with my agent. Um, my agent is Shadra Strickland from Painted Words. Painted Words is based in New York City. So after I signed with her, you know, some big changes started happening. It was really a game changer for my career. So the process is she would bring a job to me and she would say, are you interested? And when I saw 
Carla Hall, this book is by Carla Hall. I had actually just finished watching her on Netflix. Um, for her, she was the judge on one of um, Netflix baking shows. And I couldn't believe it because uh, I enjoyed her in the past too. She does holiday shows, Halloween baking shows. So I was really excited. And um, I said, of course, yes. <laughs> and the job when I got it was very fast paced. They were like, we have this deadline. And so it got started very quickly. And I worked all through that Christmas at that time. Um, and this, yeah, it was, it was very exciting. This was when, you know, things were happening. This was about 2020. Um, so, so it really brought me a lot of happiness within the craziness of the world at the time. Love that. Now, when we come back after the break, we go right into story time with Sherry's Harris as she shares the story of Carla at the Christmas Cornbread by Carla Hall. And of course, illustrated by the one and only Sharice Harris. Over to you, Sharice. It's Christmas Eve, one of my favorite days of the year. That's my mama, my sister Kim, and I go to Granny's house to celebrate the best holiday ever, Christmas. Every year, I pack my holiday pajamas and my trusty sidekick, Bubba. And every year, I write in the back, I write in the back seat, which is always piled high, high, high with Christmas presents. The best part of the ride is watching the lights twinkle on the houses as we whiz by. When I see the sign that says it's 20 miles to Lebanon, I know we are almost at Granny's house. Granny makes the best cornbread in the whole wide world. Cornbread is my favorite. Kim fiddles with the radio and finds a station playing for Jackson 5. Santa Claus is coming to town. We all sing along. Almost there. Granny is looking out of the kitchen window when we pull into the driveway. Granny, is the cornbread ready yet? I shout. Well, Merry Christmas to you too, Carla and Bubba. Merry Christmas, Granny, I say. Is the cornbread ready yet? Now that you're here, I can start baking it, she says. Granny pulls the cast iron skillet out of the heated oven and pours cornbread batter into it. Hiss, pop. The batter crackles as it hits the hot pan. Little bubbles dance around the edges. Granny uses her big oven mitt to put the skillet back in the oven. 20 more minutes until the cornbread is done. I can't wait. Merry Christmas, we hear a grandpa call from the front door. Where are my girls? Grandpa is a doctor, and everyone calls him Doc, even us. He scoops up Kim and me and gives us a big bear hug. When Doc settles into his chair, Bubba and I search for our favorite ornament on the Christmas tree. It's Santa with his big bag of toys. He looks just like me. Doc, where do you think Santa is right now, I ask. Well, he's probably all the way across the ocean bringing presents to the children in France. Doc pulls a big book off the shelf. He shows me a picture of the Eiffel Tower in Paris. When I was young, way before your mama was born, I went to France, he says. I ate snails cooked in the butter. I think about the snails that leave slimy trills on the lettuce leaves in Granny's garden every spring. Yeah, I don't think I'd like to eat snails, I say. They have lots of other things to eat in France, Doc says, laughing. You should try everything because you never know what you might like. Just then, Granny calls us to dinner. We settle around the table to eat thin fried pork chops smothered in gravy. 
green beans, and my favorite, Granny's cornbread. Tomorrow, when all the aunts and uncles and cousins come over, the table will be groaning with pans of macaroni and cheese, glazed ham, deviled eggs, cream spinach, collard greens, sweet potato pie, baked apples, and popcorn balls. After dinner, Mama sends Kim and me upstairs to put on our jammies. You can help me put together a puzzle, but you can't stay up too late, she warns, or Santa will have to go on to the next house. When Bubba and I come back down to the dining room, there is the most perfect sugar cookie sitting on a plate. I take a big bite. Carla, Kim yelled, that's Santa's cookie. I stopped chewing. The cookie turns to dust in my mouth. My eyes fill up with tears. I ate Santa's snack. What if Santa puts me on the naughty list? He won't come tonight, there will be no presents, and everyone will know I did a not so great thing. Christmas will be ruined. Carla, come here, Granny calls out. I'm in big trouble, I'm sure of it. I drag my feet toward the kitchen. But when I get there, Granny is smiling. It's okay. Santa likes cookies, but he really likes kids who are kind and sweet, like you, she says. Don't worry about that old cookie. I've got a better idea, she says. Granny pulls out a tiny cast iron skillet and then cornmeal, buttermilk, and eggs. We'll make Santa a special Christmas cornbread, she says. Granny oils the pan and puts it in the oven. She shows me how to mix together the cornmeal, baking powder, and salt. Then whisk in the eggs and buttermilk and pour the batter into the hot skillet. Finally, Granny puts the pan back in the oven. While the cornbread bakes, Granny puts soft butter, sugar, cinnamon, and a touch of almond extract in a bowl and gives me a spoon to mix up. Cinnamon butter. When the tiny cornbread is ready, Granny cuts it into wedges and puts the pan on a tray with the cinnamon butter and a glass of cold buttermilk. Bubba and I put the tray next to the tree. Looks good, says Doc. Santa gets tired of all those cookies, I bet. Still, when Kim and I settle into bed, I feel sad about eating Santa's cookie. I hope he loves cornbread as much as I do. I close my eyes and quick as a wink, it's time to wake up. It's Christmas morning. Kim, Kim, wake up, I cry. Bubba and I peek downstairs. I'm happy to see there are presents, and all the cornbread is gone except one little wedge. And there's a note. Dear Carla, thank you for the cornbread. It was very good. I saved a piece just for you. Merry Christmas, Santa. It's the best Christmas ever. And that's the end of the story. And what's great about this book, you also have the recipe for the cornbread at the back of the book. Nice, nice, nice. So now I may be able to follow that recipe to make my 
cornbread for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> I have some corn muffins, but I can make cornbread. <laughs> yeah. Look. Nice. So that's it for story time. Now, why is the role of the illustrator so important, especially when it comes to books, for children specifically? Oh, um, illustration plays a big role in children's books, especially this type of book, which is described as a picture book. So basically, in a picture book, the image works with the text. And, um, you know, children are very uh, visual as well. So the illustration really helps to uh, paint a picture of what's happening in the story. Now, you did mention before how growing up, you, when anyone asks if, what you wanted to be, you said you want to be an artist, but did anyone inspire you specifically to take up, to take up this dream or to want to become an artist or illustrator? Well, you know, I just always seem to have the knack for it, the time for it, and I would always be drawing. So going through school, there were different moments where teachers would um, encourage me to, to do what I'm doing. Um, and I just always, I was just always doing it. And my mother, um, my mother was an English teacher, a drama teacher. Um, and she just always uh, encouraged me uh, to keep going. And the books that I would read at the time, um, and yeah, I just, I just had it, had it in me. <laughs> now, in your bio, you mentioned storyboarding, costume designing, but the one I know my readers would love is puppeteering. Tell us a little bit about the journey with puppeteering as well. Well, I, along with you know, when I said growing up, I, I did art. I would do everything. Um, there was a show I loved to watch called Art Attack. And oh, I remember that. I remember yeah, that. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was one of my favorite. The guy would make all these crazy things. And mm -hmm. I would be making them along with him, um, paper mache and, you know, mm -hmm. building things. Um, mm -hmm. So when I did the associate degree at Barbados Community College, for my final program, I decided I'm going to make these huge puppets. And I got my mother's books. As I said, my mother taught drama. So she had these books um, on theater and how to make puppets. And I would follow along and kind of teach myself how to build these puppets. And that was what my final show was. So when I went to the School of Visual Arts, then they had a whole course on puppet building. So I took that course and I learned the tools and the techniques. And from there, when I came back home to Barbados, um, I knew someone that she, her name is Janelle Headley. She started um, Operation Triple Threat, which is a performing arts uh, program for children. And I started working with her and she um, had these different productions she was putting on. And that's the first time I was able to actually, uh, you know, build puppets for a large production. So for example, I did the large cow puppet for the production of Into the Woods. And um, I also worked with them on building uh, parts for the props and doing the set design. Um, yeah, so that's the cow puppet there for Into the Woods. And, and yeah, that was the first time. And it was so exciting for me because I went to the show and I was able to see the puppet in action. And that was really, really exciting. Um, so Operation Triple Threat is a great program uh, for kids and they're actually uh, auditioning for, for their um, program now. You can go and, and sign up for classes and they put on these amazing productions. So you hear that boys and girls, there are opportunities around to go and to participate. Operation Triple Threat, get a chance to try on some of Sharisha's big, large puppets. Yeah. <laughs> no. Growing up, sorry, what you just mentioned the local production besides um, Operation Triple Threat. 
Are there any other local um, theater productions that you've worked with or are currently working with? In the past, I worked with uh, the Future Center Trust. At that time, they had a puppet play they put on, and I also made a few puppets for that. And that was, when I mentioned my brief puppeteering stint, that was um, me performing with them uh, as well. And actually, you know, speaking speaking the role of the puppet, which was completely new to me. And I've also done uh, a puppet for St. Winifred's. They had their pantomime for Shrek. And I made a huge dragon puppet for them as well. Um, and, and yeah, those were the last times that, of course, now with everything going on, um, a lot of big productions have been put on hold. And my focus has, shift, has shifted, shifted to um, mainly illustration for books right now. Now, growing up as a child in Barbados, I absolutely loved comics. I did some trading, and when I say trading in my day, that just meant exchanging a comic, like an Archie comic or Spider Man or um, Avengers comic, because I tell you, where the movies, we just had the comics. Share with our readers how you are using a comic series to document motherhood, and when will we get a peak? Well, that's a that's a good question. When when I had my first daughter, um, my first child, that was about three years ago. That's when I started exploring, um, doing little comics on um, just things I was experiencing with her as a new mother, um, and it was it was mostly personal. It wasn't like I'm going to put this in a book. It was mostly just almost like therapy for me because um, I love I love humor in in motherhood. Um, that's what, you know, gets me through the really stressful, tiring times. So I was putting all the little uh, bits of humor in my comics and also her milestones. Um, like I had a, a little um, comic just talking about her, her grip, you know, as a baby, the baby grip. Um, when they hold on to you, you're like, oh, is this little baby so strong. Um, and then... I mean, she was six months, around six months, starting to put everything in her mouth, chewing on everything. Um, so, so that's something that I did and posted on social media and um, engaged with other other people who could say, you know, I oh, I relate to that. That is hilarious. You know, I went through that. Or um, it's something that I I hope now I'm I'm a little more busy with uh, work right now, but I hope to get back to it because I have a, a seven months old boy right now and uh, he is growing fast and i have a lot of new ideas um <laughs> to put into the, my my work now oh nice that would be interesting motherhood from a comic perspective of fun and playful perspective now readers i hope you've been paying attention so true or false sharice is an illustrator puppeteer cost costume designer and a chef I'm going to repeat out for you. True or false, Sharice is an illustrator, puppeteer, costume designer, and a chef. Now, you can share your answers in the chat across all of our platforms. Remember, we're up on Facebook, also on YouTube, and later you can put it up on our Instagram page as well. Now, when we come back, it's time for a Bajan mashup. Sharice, are you ready for a Bajan mashup? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Question number one. A popular Bajan comedy from the 90s that involved gossip around this special sign. Yes, that's Bajan bus stop. Uh, any car favorite character? Miss Pearly. <laughs> ah, okay. A Christmas favorite that must be on every table. Well, ham for sure. <laughs> and then I'll add sorrow. Yes. Ham, a nice ham cutter, Bajan ham cutter, with a tall glass of sorrow. Yes, that's mm. all good. Yes. Number three, your favorite place to get the magic happening for you. I guess I would say the beach. 
Yeah, definitely. Especially after having my daughter, we go to the beach all the time. Yeah, beach is so, there's just something with the beach in Barbados that just brings everything same. That's just oh, a good place. Yeah, peace. <laughs> peace. A beach and Christmas tradition that you have shared with your children, one that was shared with you that you're now sharing with your children. That would have to be driving around to see the lights because my daughter is three now so she is more aware of christmas and and getting excited about getting you know the tree up and all the lights on the tree and so she loves to see the lights on the houses as well oh, nice even this year this is my first year decorating outside my house please don't judge me please don't judge <laughs> me but i'm just in a christmas spirit now the name of a Barbadian broadcaster who was famous for reading the stories and verses by another broadcaster, Jeanette Lane Clark. And this one is Alfred Pragnell. Yeah, the, yes. you know, with that, yes, Alfred. The voice, the personality, <laughs> you just heard it all through the little Reddit Fusion box, purely Alfred Pragnell. And if you grew up 80s, 90s, up to listen. Um, I've seen VOB put on some around this time, so I'm definitely looking forward to that. Yeah. Great. So that that's it for Beja Mashup. When we come back, it's time for Simon Says. Now, on our previous show, Simon Says meant I sailed across the open sea to discover the land covered by a bearded tree. I'll read it again for you. On our previous show, Simon says, well, I sailed across the open sea to discover the land covered by a bearded tree. And the answer was Captain John Powell. And he would have been the captain who would have landed in Barbados here at Jamestown, which is now Spike Stone. Good. This week, Simon says, goes. Colors galore, dress, suits, top hats, and so much more. May I have the show, my lady? And there's a Christmas tradition. Where are we? This week, Simon Says goes, colors galore, dress, suits, top hats, and so much more. May I have the show, my lady? Who, what, or where am I? Mm. Now remember, children and parents, to like, comment, and share on our Reading to the 246 Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube pages. Special thank you to you, Cherise, for agreeing to be part of your Reading to the 246 family. You can visit her at www.ShariseHarrisIWLO.com. Or you can also visit her at ShariseHarrisIWLO.com on Instagram as well. Before we go, Sharice, anything you want to share with our readers? I just want to say thank you so much for having me and I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Oh. Now, finally, I want to say thank you to Miss Silly, Donna Silly from the Nation for our um, interview. It went out on Tuesday, last week's newspaper. So thank you so much for that, Miss Silly. Also, I want to share some birthday greetings for one of my favorite readers. Happy birthday, Kalia. She turned double digits. She was very specific. She said, I'm on Auntie Carol on the double digits on Friday. So she's now 10. So happy birthday to you, Kalia. Remember, readers, reading takes you with your imagination. Can't. Have a great evening, everyone.